giveaway of crouchy proportions. Get a completely free bet on any race on Wednesday at Cheltenham. So it's the road to Cheltenham Wrap on the end of day one of the 2023 Cheltenham Festival. Now we have not conferred, but I'm wondering where to start, which seems ridiculous after we've just seen Constitution Hill win the champion hurdle, but I'm actually going to start with Honeysuckle. Because... You know what I want to start? Go I on. want to go back to half one go on. and just relive it all again. <laughs> I don't think I've seen anything like today, do you? I just thought it was one of those great days where you would always say, yeah, I was there that day. Yeah, OK. And I feel the same way. And I think everyone who is piling out of Cheltenham now will feel exactly the same way because we're going from race to race to race and the stories that were happening were just incredible. I have a funny feeling not too many people are going to walk out of here today giving out about the price of entry <laughs> or the price of a pint. <laughs> yeah, the Guinnesses were OK today. I, I just think it was from, like, you wanted entertainment, you got it here this afternoon. Honeysuckle has just bowed out of her amazing career with a fourth Cheltenham Festival success, her second in the Mayor's Hurdle. She's won two champion hurdles. Usually you don't get to orchestrate the end of a great horse's career in that way, but somehow Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore have done it. They have. Uh, Henry had her an incredible form and then Rachel gave her a brilliant ride. She allowed Johnny Burke to dictate it. It was very good in Love Envoy. They went steady, it was slow and Rachel controlled the whole race from behind Johnny Burke and delivered at the right time. It was magical. It was great to watch it and then the emotion that went with it. Everton that came with it, the scenes afterwards and I just thought you really saw humanity. Yes. That was what it was for me. You just saw so many people who were so happy for Henry and Heather the Bromhead and I thought that was my memory of the day. I totally agree with you. You could feel it flooding yep. across the winners enclosure, couldn't you? You could feel it. You could feel it off the grandstand. You could feel it in all place. Like we said it yesterday, with the one result you hoped would happen, it, I didn't think it would happen. And I have never in my life been as happy to be wrong. <laughs> Me too. Absolutely. Totally wrong about that. What a brilliant way to sign off. And Kenny Alexander as well afterwards. I mean, he was speaking so well, well about Henry and about Rachel. Just it was that it was the touch of class that was needed. It was. Earlier, the touch of class that we saw was from Constitution Hill, who won the champion hurdle. I think that's nine now for Nicky Henderson, a first champion hurdle for Nico de Boinville. And he won it without coming out of second gear. He was so impressive, slowly run race, and uh, Nico just does what Nico de Boinville does. Kept it so simple, was always in the right place, and dictated it at his own terms. But uh, look, he's an absolute machine of a racehorse, and he is. I just hope for for the sport, for all of us, for all of you watching. I just hoping that he is lucky enough to stay sound enough that we get to see him become one of the all-time greats. Now, Paul Tannend, as you will know, doesn't generally like talking when he's just been beaten, but even he, in second place with State Man, was wanted to recognise what a monster Constitution Hill is because State Man was there made to look ordinary there. He was, and State Man probably ran to what, how he'd been running at home, mm. um, but he was, and he was just, he was brilliant at Constitution Hill. So I asked Michael Buckley, the owner of Constitution Hill, afterwards, what would you like to do? Would you like to win another champion hurdle? Would you like to win a champion chase? Would you want to win a gold cup? It's ridiculous that you could ask that quite seriously of somebody. And he said, well, how about the Ascot Gold Cup? Yeah, it's funny. I often thought um, Big Bucks could have, any power might have, possibly Fahin or Hurricane Fly. I firmly believe, when I watched Sim and I go so close to one, that all of those horses could have won one. But the big thing would be, would you run him on really fast ground and ask God in the That's summer? That's the thing. And that is the thing. He most definitely has the ability. And how about the other things? What would you like to see him do? What would I like to see him do? I love to see him become a great, and I think he is a great champion hurdle horse. Uh, will he get three miles? Uh, look, I suppose I always revert to type here. Would I be brave enough to go and always chase him with him to make him into a gold cup horse? I wouldn't. I'd be looking at him and thinking, He's going to win the next three champion hurdles. He's won a point. They haven't, they haven't scored him yet. He, he got beaten in the point. Oh, yes, oh, good point. He got beaten in the point. Sorry, yeah, he got beaten in the point. I can't conceive of that. Intense Barry Gary couldn't get what he should have yeah. got from. <laughs> I just can't conceive of it. Yeah, it would be incredible. Aintree, I think, next, and then we'll find out what Michael Buckley and Nicky Henderson want to do. I'm going to move next to Mikey O'Sullivan because what a next generation find he really is. He's still claiming three here, five in Ireland. He's had a double today, starting with Marine Nationale in the Supreme and following up with Jazzy Matty in the Boodles Fred Winter. What do you think are his particular skills? He's very cool and he's very, very confident. 
and you saw him on Jazzy Matty, he's able to pull one out of the fire as well, but I thought of Marine National, he had a game plan, it was followed fast by Vega, and one or two points early in the race, and again from the back of the third last hurdle, he made sure he was following him, and he got back into position A, he was very, very good on him, I know fast by Vega missed the last, but to me, there is no doubt the best no. horse won the race. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. We spoke also to Mikey's father, Willie O'Sullivan, who's one of Fox Hunters yeah, in the Yeah, a lovely past. citizen. Our yeah. heavenly citizen. Lovely citizen, a Lovely I think citizen it was, yeah. for Eugene who trained him. And obviously, Eugene is Maxine's dad, so very talented family. Is, is there anyone in that family who are brilliant riders? I couldn't, I don't think so. <laughs> and they have a few nephews. Uh, the curtains who are on the pony, uh, pony club circuit, they can ride too. Oh my God, another yeah. generation coming forward. Well, I, I, I look forward to what Mike Sullivan can do on good land, of course, in the Ballymore. Uh, El Fabiolo for Paul Tannend and Willie Mullins. Brilliant in the Arkle. Yeah, he was. Don't we look at set up the way we thought it was set up. John Mon didn't jump though. No. He didn't. He backed off and was careful. Didn't see that coming. But El Fabiolo was a brilliant winner. Paul got a great split off the bend to the second last. Took it, went, game over. He rubbed a few, didn't he, early on, El Fabiolo? Uh, the last as well. He yeah. wasn't particularly beautiful at that, but he has found a way of surviving, didn't he? Well, he is. You don't think he's going to fall. He's a, he's very clever with it and quick with his feet, isn't he? He is what he was a jockey would term a survivor. Yeah. <laughs> Ed Coleman said he wondered about the ground, whether actually the John Bob would bounce off a better ground surface. Was the same for them all. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think he, El Fabiolo just you know, proved the Irish Arkle form right. Uh, Corak Rambler, I mean, the stories are just thick and fast here today. Corak Rambler has won back to back Ultimas, the first one to do it, I think, since Antompa 2 in 27. Lovely story again. Peter Skidamore, Lin Lucinda Russell, and another ice cold ride from Derek Fox. Yeah, and Burley Donald from the last as well. He's quirky, um, got in a bit of trouble from the third last of the bend, but didn't panic, found his way through. He's a quirky horse, but uh, in fairness, Derry Fox, he has the key to him. And I thought Peter Scudamore was wonderful to listen to after. Yeah, he was talking great. Talking about his affection for the horse and you know, it was just great to hear him talking that way. Yeah, he rides him, rides him every day, every day that the horse is out. And he was talking about the horse's particular quirks. We've, men we've mentioned Mikey O'Sullivan. We haven't mentioned that Gordon Elliott has now trained a first festival winner for Gemma and Andy Brown, who are big supporters of his with Jazzy Matty. That was really important. It was called with construction. And does that put Gordon Elliott ahead of Martin Pipe? Uh, I think he said one behind in the winter's right, enclosure, I think. Well, he's I think, catching up with his mentor anyway. I think that might be right. I'm sorry, and Martin, that day is coming. They've got they've got uh, Mighty Potter, of course, later in the week as well. And we should tip our hat to uh, Barry Connell as well. Oh, big time. And his undying faith in Marine National. And he has unbelievable belief in, belief in good land tomorrow. And then we have Gayard de Menil to finish things off, an eighth festival winner for Patrick Mullins, a double on the day for Willie Mullins. I was asking about the 155 in the in the Grand National, and Willie seemed to be fairly lukewarm on that. Yeah, I thought he would be. Was he lucky? Was Mallard uh, well, I think he all? was. I think he was I lucky. I thought he was too. I felt a bit sorry for John McConnell to lead the truth. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think went wrong there, too, Art? Oh, just go for a jump and it all pick up yeah. and clap top it and turned over. I haven't. I've only watched it once, but I did think watching it live, Mallard Mission was home. Because he got himself in such a beautiful way, the man. Yes, he? he jumped beautifully. And look, I know in a three mile six race, the second last a long way from home, but I, I, we watched him in Nav and we highlighted him on the show. Mm. He was just there. Yeah, yeah, it was a good performance. I tipped him sadly. That was the story of my day. I know, yeah. uh, 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 two out. Uh, but it has been an incomparable day. I mean, there have been many great days here at the Chatham Festival. I don't think I've seen anything like it from start to finish I like was this. Fairly happy, Lydia, that I was here today. The next three days are going to have to go some to match this. But that was day one of the Chatham Festival 2023. A giveaway of crouchy proportions. Get a completely free bet on any race on Wednesday at Cheltenham. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.